Hey guys, it's Jake here with E-Trailer. Today we have a 2022 Forest River Flagstaff Microlite, and we're gonna be showing you how to install the Lippert Ground Control TT Automatic Leveling System. Adding this system to your travel trailer is going to make camping so much easier. When you get to the campsite, all you have to do is unhook from your vehicle, chalk your wheels, and push auto level, and it will level your camper from front to back and side to side. Now the one thing I will add is that if your tires are to come off the ground with the levelers, you really need to put it back down, put a couple of blocks underneath, and then push auto level again, and then it can level it out. Um, you're never supposed to have your tires off the ground with any leveling system. Most travel trailers from the factory will come with these scissor jack style stabilizers. Um, and the biggest difference is, is that these are stabilizers and the Lippert ground control are actually jacks. So those are designed to lift your camper, these are not. Traditionally, to level out your camper without this system, you have to start by backing onto a set of blocks in order to level your camper from side to side before unhooking from your vehicle. And then you, once you unhook from your vehicle, then you come up to your jack and then you can level from front to back. And that's how you get your camper level without this system. With this system, all you do is unhook from your vehicle, chalk your wheels, and you hit auto level, and the system knows what it needs to do to get your camper level. One of the benefits of this system, since it is a five-point leveling system, is it is gonna come with a new electric tongue jack. So if you didn't have one before, you're definitely gonna have one after picking up this kit. Um, it does have features a LED light that you can turn on and off when unhooking and hooking up to your trailer at night, um, as well as a manual uh, retract and extend when you're hooking up to your trailer. Um, the other thing I like about this kit is that the whole system is going to talk to the front jack, which is why you see it's off the ground. So when it's doing its auto leveling process, uh, what it'll do is the front jacks, the two main jacks will need to come down a little bit in order to level it, which is why the front jack automatically comes up to give it that space to lean forward. Another nice feature about this system is that you can store a hitch height memory in it. So when you're ready to hook up to your camper, all you have to do is hit auto retract and it'll retract all of the jacks. And then you hit hitch height and it'll bring your coupler up to the height of your ball mount on your vehicle. You're gonna have three ways to control this system. The first being a control panel that we recommend mounting in an outside compartment so that you can level your camper from the outside. The second being a nice large touchscreen panel that we often recommend installing near all your other controls so they're all together. And the last being you can install an app on your phone in order to auto level your camper from it. The system is going to have a very thick steel sturdy construction with a nice black powder coat finish. Um, I do like how they paint the support arms yellow so that you can see when your landing gear is down. A lot of times with the black it blends in especially if you're tearing down at night. So that yellow should be able to tell you that your jacks are still down and you can't leave. Um, with that being said, this system is designed for campers with a gross GVWR of 10,000 pounds. So all in all, this system is going to make your camping experience so much better. I personally have a camper. My least favorite thing is having to set up your campsite. And with the push of a button, this system is going to get your camper leveled from front to back and side to side. Now, as far as the installation goes, it's going to take you a couple days, especially if you've never installed something like this before. I would say at least give yourself two, if not three days, so that you can take your time. Um, definitely having another person to help you out, that's handy. Um, you can do one side while they do the other, and in no time you'd have it finished up. With that being said, let's go ahead and take it inside and show you how we did it. To begin our installation, we need to start by getting our frame brackets in place. Uh, we're going to, to clamp them to the edge of our frame, but first we need to figure out where we want to put them. Uh, we already took some measurements on the ground. You want to make sure that your foot uh, which is going to be nine inches with this bracket and the actual leg itself off of your frame rails. So you want that to be from the bottom of the foot to the ground, you need at least 10 and a half inches of clearance. We went ahead and measured it and we can mount our bracket anywhere in this area from our portable water valve to our gas line fittings. Uh, I think we're gonna put it in this area but we need to take a measurement on the other side to see where we can put it in relationship to our sewer outlet. 
because it's going to be in our way from mounting it any further forward. For your measurements for the front jacks, you'll want to put your front jack within 60 inches of the front of your camper. Um, so this is our 60 inch mark, so we have to put it anywhere in here. Um, and that 60 inch mark is going to be the center of this bracket or the center of the foot on your front jack. Uh, I think we're going to put the center of our front jack at uh, four feet. And that's going to um, get us a little bit further forward, hopefully provide a little bit more stability. And, um, and then we can do the same for the other side. I can see right now the gas line is hanging down enough um, that we should have enough space to be able to move it wherever we need to to get it around this bracket. Once we get our location determined, we just know that the center of ours is going to be even with this um, spot on our slide out. Then we'll take our bracket with the two bigger tabs facing down, the opening facing up, and these two little nibs. You're going to want to butt that against the side of the frame rail. We'll start there. And we'll take a clamp and clamp it to the bottom of our frame rail. Now we can take a 5 16 drill bit, mark the center of our holes. You're going to be putting a hole in the, um, in the frame rail on either side of the I-beam and you're going to use the elongated hole and the round hole um, on both sides. So we use a 5 16 drill bit to mark them because that's going to be our ending size, but then we'll step up using different drill bits um, to make it all the way to a 5 16. Now with our holes drilled, we'll use these shorter carriage bolts that come in your kit, run them on the inside, up through the hole that we just drilled, make sure that the square uh, lines up with the hole on the bracket, and then take a flange nut and put it on the end of it. Now, if you have a liner, you may have to hold it up or cut a small slit in it. We're gonna try to install it without cutting it first. We'll do the same thing, slide our flange nut over top of it. And you'll wanna tighten and torque these down to these specifications in your instructions. Now with our driver's side installed, we're going to do the same thing on the other side to install the passenger side bracket. If you have a gas line or a water line or anything like that in your way, um, you're either going to have to reroute it or pick a different location or just be careful. We're going to loosen our gas line because it is a flexible line and then we'll put it back up later. After we get these brackets secured to our I-beam, we can take these support beams that are going to span across the middle and that's when that's what's going to give us the backing for our jacks that we're going to need. What you want is you want these wider openings to be hooked onto this bracket that you just bolted to the I-beam. Um, if you have a water tank above your bracket like we do, you're not going to be able to just lift it up into place and slide it over. All you have to do is rotate it into place. And there's going to be two holes in the top of this plate and you just have to line them up with these two holes here. And we use those same size bolts, the carriage bolts that we use to get our bracket mounted to the frame rail. And once we get these two on, we'll get the other two on and leave them loosely installed because we're going to have to slide this center beam in between them. Um, they're going to go inside the tube on either side. So we'll span that tube across. Now what you do with this center support pole is this hole in the middle, um, it'll be on both sides, but this is the center of this beam. You want to slide it in one end and you're gonna have to slide it past so that it gets, um, you can get it into this other end and then slide it back halfway to where this is in the middle. And then use these holes that are pre-drilled in these top two brackets 
There will be eight of them, four on each side. Mark those. I used a 3 8 inch drill bit to mark them because that's going to be your final size. That'll get your center, and then we use a step bit to uh, step up to 3 8 of an inch. Um, you can use multiple drill bits, whatever you want to do, but you need to drill these out to 3 8 of an inch. Then we can take this beam, slide it in. Now you have to lift these up so that you can move the bar and slide them till they line up. Just like that. So you can see our four holes. Looks like these two are a bit off. There we go. Just like that. I'm gonna take the longer bolts that come in your kit and slide them through the holes in our bracket and in our center beam. We'll take a flange nut and thread it on the end. We can take a 14 millimeter socket and snug these up. Once we get everything in place, you want to torque all the hardware down to the specifications and the instructions. Now with an extra set of hands, we can lift our jack into place. If you're doing this on the ground, um, it's quite a bit easier because the uh, jack, you can usually set it right on your chest and then bolt it in place. two started. We'll take two more of our larger bolts and get this other end in place. This each jack is going to take six bolts, two here and four on the motor end of it. We'll get our hardware loosely installed for now then we can get our other bolts in place. I'll take a 14 millimeter socket and wrench and snug these up. We're gonna snug each one of them a little bit so that the whole thing kind of goes up together. When you're tightening these up, be sure that the you have the same amount of space on either side of your jack before tightening it up all the way. Now we'll want to torque these bolts to the specifications and the instructions and we'll repeat the same process of getting our jack in place on the other side of our camper. To get our sensors installed, uh, we're going to have a sensor for the front and a sensor for the rear. Your front sensor is going to have to be within 36 inches of the front of your camper. Um, so we have an option here, we have a brace behind this trim panel um, and then we have another option but it's 39 inches back so we can't use that. Um, what we did here is we're going to take the we took these two screws out of these this piece of trim and I'm just going to trim it back about an inch on each side because this is going to have to get self tap up into this brace and then we'll cut a small hole in our belly here and this sensor can slide up inside of it then it'll be protected and we're going to do the same for the rear. Now we've got our hole cut out here. We'll just test fit it, make sure it fits. All right, that's good. It's a nice tight fit. That'll help protect it um, for the time to come. Um, and when you're mounting the sensor up, you want to make sure that the front is facing the front of the camper and then the rear, um, you want to face towards the rear and it also say this side up. So you want to mount it up like that. We'll take two self-tapping screws, start them by hand because this is screwing into this plastic. Um, you just want to be really careful. We'll take a 5 16 
hex bit and then run these down. Again, it's plastic, so just be careful not to crack it. Now we can take our sensor wire, run it around our sensor. So it comes out the opening. Like that. And we can take two more self-tapping screws and tap it into our frame. Now that that's sturdy, we'll go to the back of our camper and do the same thing. Now you can see here on the rear, we just have to mount it anywhere rearward of our rear jack. So we mounted it on the frame rail that is, or the cross member actually, that's running across. Um, we mounted it here and did the same with the belly panel as we did for the front. With most of our components installed under our trailer, we can come to the tongue of our trailer and take off our old jack, remove the power wire if you have a power jack, and install our new one. Just slide it in place, and we can use the supplied bolts to bolt it down. Now we can snug these down, and we're gonna save this wiring for when we do all the wiring at one time. I find that it helps to eliminate um, con confusion if you just do all the wiring at once and get everything mounted first. Here on day two of our install, we started running our wiring. After we got all of our components installed, that's gonna be the best time to do it. We started with our driver side rear harness, ran it over to our driver, or passenger side rear, then connected our sensor in the center of our rear and then ran it up along the frame, zip tying it to existing components along the way. You just wanna make sure everything is safe and secure attached to the frame. Then ran it up to the front jacks and brought our tongue jack wire back, our front sensor all over to this area under this cabinet, which is where we're going to end up putting our panel and our control panel on the inside. So we use an existing hole that's in the bottom. We happen to have a water inlet that comes in there and we ran it right alongside, ran all those wires up into that cabinet. Now we're not gonna have very much room to show you as we go through this um, because of where we're installing this. We like it to be out of the way and we're putting it behind the drawer that's underneath our oven. Uh, we'll show you a quick clip before we have it installed to see all the wires and everything that we've ran up into that cavity. Um, but to make our connection to the board, you'll have your power and ground, then you'll have your left rear, right rear, your right front, and your left front, and your tongue jack. All of these connectors are going to be those dual connectors that are coming from each harness from each of the jacks. Um, these two are going to be your sensors. This one is going to be your remote wire from the controller that we installed on the outside um, in one of our compartments. And then down here is going to be the control uh, connection for your panel and our panel we're going to mount right here um, because I think it's a pretty good spot there's enough space behind this panel there's nothing behind it other than the oven but it's about three inches away so we should have more than enough space uh, we'll go ahead and get everything connected here and then show you uh, cut, how to cut out this opening now in order to mark out the spot where we want our touch panel you really put it wherever you want uh, but in this camper we found that this is going to be a really good spot that way you can reach it from the inside the door if you need to and we're going to try to put it um I think we're going to put it to where it's the top of it's pretty well level with this um this other interface here so we'll put it here put ourselves a little mark of where we're going to need to cut So we actually went and grabbed our touch panel um, and it looks like we're a little bit off, but we'll hold up this back piece up to the wall and try to make this a straight line. So it looks good there. And we'll take the marker, mark the top, and we can take that same bracket again and 
line it up because that's where our opening is going to need to be. And then trace it out. And this area is going to be what we're going to be cutting out. Just like that. Now we can take a, a roto tool or a jigsaw and cut this opening out. And we'll just test fit this, make sure our back slides in there, and that fits perfect. Now we can put our bracket in place. You want to make sure these two tabs are at the bottom. Just be careful. You'll have these smaller diameter screws in your kit to put that in place. Now before we put our touch panel in place, we'll need to make a few connections. You'll take the gray wire that comes in your kit and connect it to the CAN, which stands for CAN bus connection here. Then you'll want to put a, a blank, which will come in your kit, you'll get two. Put one of the blanks in and then you'll want to match this on the control module that we put under there. Um, and then you'll take your power wire harness. It is only going to come with about six inches and then we just extended it so we can run it down to the panel in order to get power to our touch panel. Make this connection and then we're going to take these wires and throw them down into this hole and run them over to the panel. Once you get it to this point, these little tabs you want to line up with the slots on the back of your touch panel. Slide them over it so it's flush on all four sides. Then we'll take our really small screws that come in the kit and run them up through the bottom of our panel into that bracket. You have to peel some of this sticky back. Underneath, after we made all of our connections, we connected our positive and negative wire that is run up through the floor with our rest of our wires from our battery. We ran it, uh, we also ran the power and ground from our touch panel that's on the side of our cabinet down into the same point. We're just harnessing that power from that point rather than running it all the way down into the battery. Outside by the tongue of our trailer, we ran our power and ground wire over, you can see it there, running along our other wiring, ran it up here. We ran the one end to a circuit breaker, which was already installed on our trailer. You can pick one up on our website if you wanna do that. Um, the panel in there does need to be fused, so you'll either need to attach to a circuit breaker or fuse it. And then here, you'll see our power wire from our jack running down and then up, and it's pre-installed in the back side of our jack. You will have a small control panel that comes in your kit and you can really choose wherever you want to mount that. We chose this small compartment. Um, it's, they only had a, uh, a small crock pot stored in here so it fit nicely up against the wall. This is just so that they can um, control their leveling system from the outside. They don't have to be inside at the touch panel. For this panel, you will have to cut a small hole. It's like a one and a half by a one inch hole that you'll have to cut in whatever panel you decide to put it in. Uh, but it's really not that big a deal. We just used a drill bit, drilled out our four corners and then used a jigsaw to cut it out. As far as the wiring goes, we ran our wire down through the floor, out through the bottom of the camper and then over and up into that same cabinet where our circuit board is at. Once you've got everything connected, you can now test your system. Uh, what you want to do is you'll want to start by setting your zero. Um, and that is just making sure that your camper is level. That's what's going to be your zero for your system. In order to get that on this touch panel, you have to click leveler six times. In your instructions, it may say to click connected six times to get the zero option. It'll say, will you like to set your zero 
no or yes. You want to click yes, and then you'll use the manual buttons to be able to set all your jacks um, and level out your camper. We used a just your standard bubble level in order to level our camper. You'll use it here on your floor from front to back and then side to side on your camper to get the level front to back and side to side. Once you have your zero set, you just click auto level and you'll hear the system start to work. Typically it'll start with your front jack moving up or down, depending on what kind of grade you're in. We're just in our shop and we know that we have slope in our concrete moving out towards the door. So that's why our jack just went down a little bit so that our front jacks can then kick in and start doing the work for the front. Once the front gets set to the right height, because our again, our shop is sloped, to the front of the camper, it brought the front up first, and now it's starting to retract the rear jacks just to stabilize it. Now when you're setting the system up for the first time, it's a good idea to plug in your camper to a power source either at your house or if you take it to a campsite in order to set it up. Um, because these jacks are going to take a lot of power when you're running them up and down in order to set your level. Now you can see here on our screen, our light was flashing red and now it's solid red to show that it is leveled out. And when doing all this, you also want to check your outside panel. You can turn the panel on by pushing the up and down arrow at the same time until you see a green light. And then we can hit retract all to test its function. Looks like everything's working properly. Well guys, now that we know everything's working properly, that's gonna do it for installation of the Lippert ground control system on our 2022 Forest River Flagstaff Microlite.